yeah, that's not a clickbait title. It's not something like, I had a stroke of genius, or I had a stroke of luck. I actually had a stroke. I'll talk about that more in just a minute because I think it's important, but I also want to say that we're going to be making some tasty food here today. We're going to be making some Southwest meatballs with chipotle brown rice. Really delicious meal. But first, yeah, I had a stroke. Let me give you a little background on what happened. I was home alone. My wife was out of town visiting our daughter in Georgia, and I just reached for my cell phone that was sitting on the coffee table. This was about like 10 o'clock at night, a little bit after. And when I picked up my phone or tried to pick up my phone, it felt like it weighed 50 pounds. And then my whole right arm just turned to jello, no strength at all, couldn't control it. Now, I had been in the hospital many, many times visiting my late brother-in-law, riding up and down elevators. And in every elevator, there was a sign that said, if you feel arm weakness, if you lose balance, if you have vision problems suddenly, call 911 because it can be a sign of a stroke. Well, I remembered those signs and I immediately called 911. After a couple minutes on the phone with 911, I then called my wife. I called my sister-in-law who lives very close. In fact, she and my niece got here just a couple minutes after the paramedics. And the paramedics were here within I'd say less than seven minutes. And that's one of the keys with a stroke is the quicker you get treatment, the quicker you get to a hospital to have any treatment you might need, the better a chance you have for a full recovery. Well, the interesting thing here is after my arm went numb and I got off the phone with the dispatcher, my wife, and my sister-in-law, it felt fine again. I could use it, no problem. So the paramedics arrived, they had me sit down, they started checking me, and I was just feeling okay at that point. And they asked me to say a sentence to sort of test my speech, and I said it. And then they looked sort of curiously at me. And they said, say it again. And when I said it again, all that came out was gibberish. And at that exact time, my arm and my entire right side just, again, turned to jello. No strength, couldn't control them. I was terrified. My sister-in-law was standing there looking at me. I just started crying, and I knew that something bad was happening. Well, paramedics got me in the ambulance. And again, as soon as I was in the ambulance and it started pulling away with its siren going, I felt fine. In fact, I was repeating things over and over, phone numbers I knew, just counting backwards. I could speak again, and my right side was functioning again. Well, they got me to the hospital, they did a bunch of tests, and after CT scans and MRIs and echocardiograms and everything turning out normal, I was diagnosed with what's called a TIA, which is a transient ischemic attack. If you're gonna have a stroke, that's probably the best kind to have because you're not necessarily gonna have any effects after. You might, but you're not necessarily going to, and I haven't had any effects after. Now, it does put me at a slightly higher risk for having a full stroke within a certain amount of time, and even down the road, I gotta be careful about some things. You know, us barbecue guys standing out at the grill, we could stand to lose a few pounds, a lot of us. And you know, I've been working on that, but you need to keep working on that. But really there was no cause found for this. And that's one of the things about being aware of the symptoms. And really the acronym is be fast. B, if you have any balance issues or you notice anyone with any balance issues, the E is for eyes. Are you noticing any vision changes that are sudden and unexpected? F is for face. Is there a part of your face that's drooping where the muscles aren't being controlled? A is for arms. Is one of your arms or both of your arms suddenly weak? You can't really control it. S is for speech. Are you mumbling or slurring? Did that come on suddenly? And T is for time. If any of those things are happening, you gotta call 911. Getting to a hospital quickly and getting treatment is really important. Now, for me, this could have been a full-on bad stroke. If I had gotten to the hospital as quickly as I did, they still could have treated it. And I'm so glad that what I had was the temporary, more minor version. But if this happens again in the future, I'm calling 911. And that's why I think it's important to say these things to you so that if you notice any of these symptoms, you act. Don't wait. Don't try and power through it. That's my nature. If I hadn't remembered all those signs in the hospital elevators, I might have just powered through this and thought, oh man, I'm feeling funky. Why isn't my arm working? No, you gotta get to the hospital. You gotta get help.
but I'm feeling great now, so let's go ahead and make these meatballs. So we're gonna start with two pounds of an 85-15 ground beef. To this, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of kosher salt, half a teaspoon of a coarsely ground black pepper, half a teaspoon of granulated garlic, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, a quarter teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm also gonna add half a cup of fire roasted corn. Now this is from one of those bags of frozen fire roasted corn, it has some little peppers and things in it also, and this just sort of thawed out in the refrigerator. Also gonna add half a cup of black beans. These are black beans from a can that have been drained. We're gonna add one egg. And I've got half a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm gonna start with about half of those, so a quarter cup of breadcrumbs to start. And we mix. Wanna really get everything incorporated here, get those pieces of corn, the black beans in here. Let me tell you, it feels good to be cooking and on camera again. Last week at this time, I had my head in an MRI and I'm claustrophobic. I'm gonna add some more breadcrumbs, maybe about half of what's left. And a lot of this is by feel. You're just feeling to see, is the meat too moist, too wet? And you really wanna mix those breadcrumbs and you don't want any patches of super dry spots. This just really helps bind it together. And if some of our corn and black beans kinda hang out on the outside or fall off, not a problem. This is really similar to making a meatloaf, but we're just getting a big mass of our ground beef and all our goodness here so we can turn them into meatballs. All right, that looks good to me. Let's form these into some meatballs. So now you can form these meatballs any way you want by hand. I do that almost all the time, but today I'm just using an ice cream scoop just to get the right amount that I want. So basically all I'm doing is filling up that ice cream scoop like this, getting it in my hand and forming it. I have a baking sheet here with some parchment paper on it. I also love the looks of these with that corn and the black beans there. They just look really good. I should also mention that your oven should be preheating to 400 degrees because we're gonna be baking these at 400 today, probably for about 30 minutes. And we're gonna go until they're an internal temperature of 165 is what's recommended. I usually take them closer to 155 when we're talking about just ground beef, but you have to make that decision yourself. See, I think we're gonna have to adjust people around here and that's fine. Probably end up with, I don't know, eight meatballs. The parchment paper just sort of helps with cleanup after you bake these. All right, let's get these in the oven, like I said. 30 minutes, we'll check them, and I think they're probably gonna be right around that 155 range for me. You have to pick the temperature you want them done at, and you're gonna have to check them. Every oven is different. It's not a set time. I can't say it's gonna be 30 minutes and they're gonna be done. Your oven might take 45 minutes. Your oven might take 25 minutes. But let's get them in so that we are closer to having a taste. So while our meatballs are baking in the oven, we're gonna get our rice ready. I can't remember if I called it adobo brown rice or chipotle brown rice. Really, it's chipotle brown rice. We are gonna be using the adobo sauce from those chipotles for something else, but let's get these chipotles ready. So I have two chipotles here and I'm putting them on my synthetic cutting board because this is a mess to clean up. And I'm just gonna break these down. These definitely have some heat to them, so if you don't like a lot of heat, I would cut back on the amount. All right, let's get these mixed in our rice. So I've got about three cups of brown rice that I just cooked. It's just normal brown rice. I love this stuff, great flavor. And we're just gonna mix this all in, get those chipotles distributed so we don't have big clumps anywhere. We want it to flavor all this brown rice. Also adds a really nice color, that deep red. So I wanna add just a pinch of salt to this. All right, our meatballs are gonna be done in just a few minutes. We'll get them out, we'll check them for temp, and then we're gonna build a nice little platter with some of this chipotle brown rice and those Southwest meatballs. The 
those are looking really good. Let's go ahead and get a temperature, see how close we are. We're looking at 157, not bad, not bad. All right, let's get some meatballs plated up with our chipotle brown rice and have a taste. So let's get some of our rice in a dish here. Just love how the brown rice takes on some of the color of that adobo sauce from the chipotles. I'm gonna hit this with a little cilantro here, totally optional. I know some people don't like cilantro, but I like cilantro. Get a couple meatballs here. Now with the meatballs, I'm gonna brush them with a mixture of two tablespoons of honey and one tablespoon of that adobo sauce from the chipotles. A little bit of sweet heat. Just a nice little brushing on top, that's all. Not a lot. This is a little bit of a spicy dish. You could leave this out if you want to, but I like the heat here. I'm also gonna hit the top of these meatballs with a little bit of green enchilada sauce. This is just some pre-made green enchilada sauce. You can make your own from scratch if you want. I've done it before, but we're going a little easy today. And this has just been warmed up and gonna go right on top there. Finally, we're gonna grate some cotija cheese on top. I just love cotija. Nice little bite of saltiness to it. And there we go our Southwest meatballs with our chipotle brown rice. See, I didn't say adobo brown rice this time, but man, whatever you call it, this looks great. Let's have a taste. So I'm actually gonna get a taste of the rice first without any of the meatball, because I'm really a rice lover, and this chipotle rice looks really good. Cheers. For me, that's just the right amount of heat. Might be too much for you. Maybe you want more, totally adjustable. And now let's get some meatball here. Oh yeah, cheers number two. Mmm, that mixture of everything in there, the combination of that fire roasted corn, the black beans, the seasonings, and that little bit of glaze at the end there, that little bit of heat on the outside, to me, this is one of those sort of comfort meals. It feels good in the fall, like when it's chilling down right now. Totally easy to make, super tasty. Mm. Thank you all for watching and listening to my little PSA at the beginning here, but I do think it's important if you're having any of those signs or symptoms, if anyone you're with is having those signs or symptoms, don't hesitate. Call 911, get help, because it really can mean the difference between life and death and life and a good recovery and I'm just very fortunate. I wanna be here for a long time and make a lot of great food for you and just have a lot of fun.